over this place if you know that the Good Shepherd knows exactly what you need. Look at your neighbor and say, stop complaining. Stop complaining. Whatever you just went through, the shepherd knows that you needed to. Oh, so tell him, don't complain, celebrate. Celebrate, 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 celebrate. I want everyone standing just for a quick moment. Give somebody a big hug. And tell them, welcome, welcome to, the to the labor and delivery room. Everybody can't be in here. Tell them this is a private, intimate place. Private, intimate place, private, intimate place. Just, that's the trained technicians. Just the midwives. Because tell them I'm getting ready to be on the table and I'm going to be just strung out wide open and everybody can't see me like that. Give somebody a big hug and tell them I'm so glad you came. Tell somebody on the other side I love you and you can't do a thing about it. Now let's really make the devil mad and leave your seat and find three people and give them a compliment. Tell them how good they're looking. Tell them how sharp they are. Tell them how blessed they are. Hallelujah. three people. Some of y'all going all around the room. Back to your seat. You should see your faces now. All it took was a hug and a compliment. When you get back home, remember that. Give out a hug and a compliment and you could change somebody's attitude. You could put a smile on their face. See, too often, they accuse girly girls of not being able to appreciate other women. They see somebody come in looking good and looking cute. They say, look at her, she thinks she's cute. It's not she thinks she's cute, it's you know she's cute and it's bothering you. But tell somebody, leading ladies acknowledge other leading ladies. They even appreciate the extras. I bless God for Bishop and Lady Jakes for the vision of this meeting. I thank them for their hospitality that has been expressed not only through them personally, but through all of their staff, the ushers, the armor bearers, the attendants, the drivers, the greeters. Come on, you all. Some of y'all know you haven't been treated like this all your life. I thank God for Potter's House standing with the leader in this vision. I don't take it lightly that I'm on assignment to speak into your lives today. As I look back over my life, my oldest daughter is 32. I don't know how that is, and I'm just 34. But when I look back over my life and I think about all the things that the Lord allowed me to go through, I realize he was preparing me just for this one moment. Oh, oh God, oh, Tell somebody, you know you've been to hell and back. The smoke is still on your clothes. Everything you go through may be for one moment. Don't miss your moment. And I'm just blessed. 
I'm blessed of the Lord. I acknowledge even my parents, Bishop and Mrs. Stallworth of Stockton, California, that taught me about Jesus as a little girl, that baptized me in his name and allowed me to know about being filled with the Holy Ghost at age six. I used to complain and say, God, why was I saved so young? I don't have the testimony that I was on drugs and slept with 24 men and slipped over to women every now and then. And I said, look like my ministry would be more effective if I had had some history. And one day I was complaining about being saved so young. God said, I'm tired of you asking me why I saved you so young. He said, I'm getting ready to tell you. He said, the first time I saved you is from your sins. And then the second place of salvation is to save you from you. He said, you would have turned Stockton out if I hadn't have served, saved you from you. And, oh, come on, somebody. You thought you was holy since you slipped out of your mama's womb. But if it wasn't for the grace of God. Tell your neighbor, you're looking good today, but we know underneath that look. You got some situation. Oh, God. And I bless God. I also I want my sister. She's a walking miracle. She just finished radiation treatment for cancer last week. Stand up, Carol. That's a powerful woman of God. That's how, you know how you know how powerful you are? The anointing attracts attack. If you have great anointing, you have great attack. She's an awesome woman. And I was on my way to Oakland to preach when I got word that they had diagnosed a mass that was growing underneath her ear, the size of a golf ball, as cancer. Sister Parker, on the way back from preaching, I said, take me to Stockton. They took me there and I went in her room and I went to pray that the Lord would heal her. God said, do not pray that I heal her because she's already healed. He said, pray that I strengthen her in the healing process because the cancer is gone. She's a living witness. The cancer is gone. My niece, Princess, is here and I'm glad she's here because I want to tell some of you. There are those of you that might be in a relationship that the devil has sent you to destroy you. And the Bible said, believe in the prophet and prosper. I was on a two-week fast back east at my home in New Jersey, laying on my face for myself, I thought. And God showed me my niece. She was in a, a relationship with a wannabe. The Lord said, call your sister and your brother-in-law and get permission to speak to your niece. See, y'all, some of y'all talking to folks without permission. You don't go up in somebody's house and talk to their people and you haven't talked to the pastor. You don't talk to children and you haven't talked to the parent. I got permission and I called my niece and I said, the Lord told me to tell you that boy is not the will of God for your life. Break off with him and do it now. I said, if you will obey, God already has somebody standing in the wings that will love you. But I like him. I said, baby girl, we ain't trying to put you with somebody you like. We want to put you with somebody that God loves. She obeyed, crying, but she obeyed. And her name really is Princess. And the Lord had me to find a glass slipper and send it to her. Send her some negligees and tell her mama to buy a hope chest. And within days, a football player that's spirit filled. Oh, Jesus. That she had really loved from a little girl up came back into her life and stand up and show him your left hand. Bam! It hasn't even been two months. Tell your neighbor, you are one step away from your miracle. It's called obedience. See, the boy she was with, his mama say, your niece has been such a blessing to my son. I said, what has your son done for my niece? She's 
blessed today because she obeyed. Y'all better start listening to people that care about you. I remember even personally when I became a widow, I was dating this man of God. He wasn't a preacher, he was a doctor. Medical girl. I knew this was the will of God concerning me. One morning the Lord said, whatever you think you have with that man, break it off. He is not my will for your life. I said, what you talking about? It was hard, but I obeyed. And let me tell you what happened. Some of you don't even know this. Eight years later to the day, he died on the same day that my first husband died. I wouldn't be here today. I'd have been somewhere in a crazy house trying to figure out how it happened twice if I had not obeyed. Look at your neighbor and say, please, please hear God. your hand. Father, we thank you for your power, your spirit, and your authority that reigns in this room. We bless you for your name. We give you permission to let your kingdom come and your will be done in this place today. We thank you in advance for those that will be saved, healed, and set free. We thank you today for a woman that was on her way to the mental hospital threatening suicide will go out of here whole today. We praise you for what you're going to do in advance. In Jesus' name, and all of those in agreement, put your hands together and say it is so. <laughs> Ladies, the auditions are over. And you've got the part. You've learned the lines, and you made it to every rehearsal on time. Your wardrobe has been fitted. Your hair is styled. The props are in place. The crowd is waiting. The lights are dim. The curtain is up. You know your cues. You know the blocking. And yet you, the leading lady, stand frozen, tongue-tied, cross-eyed, knees knocking, and all because of a one six-letter word, issues. I want to talk to you for a few minutes from the subject. I'm a leading lady, but I got issues. Look at your neighbor and say, you are a leading lady, but you got issues. Well, some of you think if, you, if, if I don't say it, then it ain't me. If you crazy, whether you say you crazy or not, we looking at you be crazy. I want you to open your mouth and tell the truth and say, I'm a leading lady, leading but I got, issues. I got issues. In the book of Acts, the first chapter, verse 8, it said, Ye shall have power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost part. Now the first thing I want you to focus on, it says, and you shall have power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. It doesn't say in you. And I think too many of us are doing our relationship with the Lord as we do with men in the natural. We're letting too many men come in us before we let them come on us. Oh God, oh God, hold, hold on, hold on just for a minute. You, you, you need to let him come up on a marriage license and come up on a house note and come up on a car note before you let him up in you. you I can talk to you if y'all ain't ready. I, I want to talk to some real, do I have some real people up in here today? And he said, I need you to let my Holy Ghost come up on you because I got somewhere I want you to go. See, leading ladies are not leading ladies of just one movie, just one show. He said, I want you to first lead in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the city of peace. When you first come into God, Terry, you got to have the peace of God. And that's the first thing he gives you to let you know you're on his side. And sometimes
time we are enjoying the peace of God, mother, we enjoy it so we don't want to leave it. He said, but I don't want you to just stay in peace. I want you to go to the next city called Judah. Because Judea is the Hebrew word for the Greek word Judah. What is Judah? Praise. You should enjoy peace so much that you get to the place where you want to praise God for your peace. And some of us want to get a tamarind and we want to get new shoes to shout. We want to flip, turn, and just praise from now to the rapture. And he says, hold up. That's not where I want you to stop. I want to take you to Samaria. And the Greek word for Samaria is Sychar. Sychar means a place of drunkenness. Why would a leading lady have to go to a place of drunkenness? God said, I take you there because I want to give you a sobriety test. I want to see, can you take your test and come out sober? I want to test you with power and see, can you handle it? I want to take power from you, and when I strip you, I want to see can you handle it. I want to test you with love, and I want to test you with lust. I want to test you with alcohol, and drugs, and cigarettes. I want to test you with men, and I want to test you with women, and see can you come out sober. He said, and the reason that I take you to this place of drunkenness, because it ain't but one more place to go after you go to the place of drunkenness, and that's a place called uttermost. Oh, in Psalms, you know the scripture, if you look for me in heaven, I'm there. If you go to hell, you'll find me. And even if you go to the uttermost parts of the sea, you can't go nowhere without God. But he wants to know that you have passed your test before he releases you to uttermost because uttermost is endless blessings and miracles. He's got to know, can I trust you with trouble before I can trust you with a blessing? So he says, I got to know that you know that you know who you are in me so that when I give you the resources to everything, you won't act a fool, leading lady. And I said, now God, what does uttermost mean? When I looked it up in the Hebrew, it says it's as a man in a rowboat, rowing back forward. Look at your neighbor and say, to advance requires rowing back forward. Let me show you, let me show you. Here you are, leading lady, in your boat, headed toward destiny. You're in a rowboat. God says, I'm going to empower you, not a motor, you. Now, for me to get to that podium where I got to get where my notes are to bring you the word of God today, I've got to row back to move forward. Oh, you didn't get it. Let me go over here. I can't get no help on that side. They, the holy ones of Israel. But do I have any girly girls up in the house going to help me? I'm trying to get there, so I got to row back. Sickness, man trouble, money trouble, mind trouble. Today I wanted you to roll back forward. And touching issues mean you got to go back to go forward. Some of you have come in denial. That ain't me, that ain't me, that ain't me. Uh -uh. I ain't crazy, uh-uh. It's just that time of the month. I'm not psychosomatic, uh-uh. I ain't no manic depressor. They lying on me, girl. If that, look, if that usher look at me one more time, I'll slap her. And then the next minute, you crazy. Tell your neighbor, yeah, you crazy. One minute you loving on your husband, the next minute cussing him out. Come on, one minute you got your hair gold, the next Sunday you got striped hair, this week you got a weed, by Bible class on Wednesday you got braids, by choir rehearsal on Friday you got a ponytail, by Sunday you're back to the blonde. Yeah, you crazy. Turn in your Bibles to Mark. The fifth chapter, verse 25. I honor my husband too, Bishop Andrew Turner. That's a bad boy. 
I can't talk about him too long. I will lose my focus. That man called me this morning. He called me at 2 o'clock and prayed with me, girl. <laughs> then he called me back this morning a couple of times. I said, make me feel good, make me feel good, make me feel good. I had to recurl my hair when he finished. Jesus. I'm not going to tell you how good my husband is. You beat him, went to California and took him before I got back home. Some of y'all give too much public information out. So I'm gonna switch what I just said. He, I thank God for my all right husband. <laughs> I praise God because through my husband, the dreams I've had, God has brought to pass. Oh God, oh God, see, not my nightmare. All right, here we go. Mark the fifth chapter, verse 25. And a certain leading woman had an issue of blood 12 years, suffered many things and many physicians, had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging you, and sayest you, Who touched you? He looked around about to see her that had done this thing, but the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Too often when we have looked at this woman with an issue, we have focused on the miracle that she touched the hem of his garment and was healed. But God told me to tell you there was a greater miracle that took place. The greater miracle is that she survived 12 years bleeding. Some of you are waiting for God to take your husband, but the greater miracle is you're still with him in your right mind. Oh, my. Some of you are waiting for more money, but the greater miracle is that you're still in your house, still got your car, and you're at this meeting with less than you ever had. You waiting to touch him, and you don't know he has sustained you all the while. For 12 years, what would have killed somebody else has kept you alive. Jesus. This woman was separated and alone. Day after day, month after month, and year after year. She felt no physical contact. No warm touch from another human being. Her very presence caused some who knew of her condition to recoil as to avoid contamination. For 12 years, life hemorrhaged from her body, leaving her pale and weak and rendering her unclean in the eyes of those in her family and community. She was alone and cut off, hearing only the whispering voice of her own self-condemnation. Have you ever had a conversation that ended up in an argument, but you wasn't in the room with nobody but yourself? Then after many years, the monotony of her seclusion was interrupted by the swell of discussion concerning one through whom miracles and healing flowed. Her village of Caponium was alive with reports concerning Jesus, the rabbi transplanted from Nazareth, who was said to have healed the sick and calmed storm-tossed seas. Could this be my season of healing, she asked. If he had healed others with a word, could he not speak that word to me as well? If he could calm a raging sea, why not my unsettled heart? I need to tell you ladies something that are leading ladies. You need to rehearse your lines in barber shops and in beauty shops and at school and in the grocery and at your house so that people can hear about Jesus. This woman wouldn't have known about Jesus if somebody that knew him had not talked about Jesus. 
Look at your name and say, who you been talking about? Who you been talking about? Who you been talking about? This was a time of desperate hope for her. Just like many of us that came this week, we were saying, God, if I don't get something this week, I don't think I can make it. God, I'm on the edge. I need to, do I have anybody in here that's desperate? You told God, God, please, if you just help me get there, if I don't have money to eat, if you just help me get there, if I don't have a hotel room, I hide in the church bathroom and sleep in the bathroom all night, just let me get there. She had invested the little money she had in one false hope after another to rid herself of her plague. There was not a counselor or a quack who did not know her and seek to offer her something and sell her a remedy. But after trying everything they offered, she got worse. How many of you went to mama and did what mama said, got worse? Went to the preacher, did what he said, got worse. Went to marriage counselor, did what they said, got worse. Went to Victoria's Secrets and bought you something with the thing going up the back and got worse. Has anybody been somewhere what you couldn't do nothing about nothing? Oh, can I just be transparent? My marriage hit a place where I couldn't do nothing about nothing. Right at the time where I was going all over the country, helping other marriages and being flown out of the country secretly as a consultant to VIP's marriages, went home and ran right into hell. Oh, see, you don't want to be real. You're going to act like your husband wants you 24-7. You don't even want your own self. I know he don't. <laughs> I went and got a new negligee. That didn't work. I went into the bending ministry. That didn't work. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I changed how I cook. That didn't work. I canceled a few meetings. That didn't work. I took a few more meetings. That didn't work. What happened? I got desperate. Leading lady, some roles you can't play till you have lived the role. God said there's some things you are talking to women only by faith. He said, I got to take you through some situations, take you through some circumstances, take you through some trials and tests. So when you stand up and tell people that you've been to hell and back, they smell that you've been there. I had talked to women that said, I love my husband. My lo husband loved me, but all of a sudden he ain't saying I love you, boo. I, I used to tell them, just pray, girl, it'll be all right, change your cologne. <laughs> Y'all, things got so rough for me, Wonder went from white diamond to miracle. Y'all seen that new cologne called Miracle? I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put on some spiritual cologne. I sprayed here, man. Oh, come on, come on. You know you got to spray there. That man would come to bed, pat me, say, did you have a good day, good night, roll over. I'm like, put pot on from the top of my head to the bottom of the what you call it. Bless you, good night. What happened here? He was swinging me from the lights a month ago. I had to get away with God. You know what had happened? God said, I will have no other God. Let me help you leading ladies. Don't you make your job your God. Don't you make your man your job, your God. Don't you make your money your God. Don't you make your children your God. God will blow on it. I got away from 5 a.m. prayer because Redbone didn't want me to wake him up so early. And he said, when I wake up, he can't go back to sleep. So God, I'll pray later. And later, God, later and later and later. God said, okay, I'm going to fix you. God got me to a place where I had nothing but time to pray. And I told God, God, if you get me back to my prayer life, if you get me back to worshiping, if you get me back to praising, I promise you no nappy head nigglet on this earth will ever take you from me again. I will worship you and you only. So help me 
God. It wasn't until I got bone back on track with God that Red Bones got back on track with me. I can't even tell you when it happened. I just know that May 13th was my eighth wedding anniversary. And have you ever had an anniversary and wasn't talking? I can't help you, you ain't real. I'm gonna come talk to y'all, cause see y'all, y'all over here know what mama is talking about. These over here, uh-uh, they trying to impress. I don't care what y'all think about me. I'm more careful about what he knows about me. And I went to hell and back so I could tell you and snatch you out of hell. That Monday I had to go and do a funeral, represent the church, because you're the associate pastor. The real meaning is that you get to associate with the pastor, but when he mad at you, you don't even get to do that. It was a Catholic church. was out of town, so I was driving. But this is the funniest thing. The man ain't half talking to you. He gave you a Rolls Royce for Christmas and then gave you a two-seater Lexus for your birthday, but he ain't half talking. And I'm driving in the new car, got the top down, mom was all cool. But, but we ain't talking. So you, 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 you didn't catch it. Jesus thundered at me, he said, what are you doing to celebrate your eighth wedding anniversary? I said, we ain't talking, and if he, even if he asked me, I ain't going to dinner with him, and I ain't buying him no card and nothing else. God said, maybe you didn't understand me. I said, I asked you, what are you going to do to celebrate your eighth wedding anniversary? I said, maybe you didn't hear me, we ain't talking. What part of that did you miss? He said, no, what part of that did you miss? You and Andrew are not the only two in that marriage. There's three of us. What are you going to do to celebrate me in this marriage, little girl? I began to weep. Mama, I pulled the car over on the freeway. I said, God, I'm so sorry. He said, it ain't about you and Andrew. I kept you there. I sustained you. What are you going to do to celebrate me? I said, God, I surrender. I do whatever you say. He said, I want you to invite eight women, one representing every year, and go to a restaurant, have it privately decorated, get them gifts, and thank them for what they have poured into your marriage. I said, what if he don't want to go? He said, you're still missing it. He ain't even going to be invited. Just eight women. I said, God, am I to tell him? He said, yes, tell him. I went to the funeral, and that night was prayer closet and Bible class. Do you have any first ladies here? That the whole church knows it's your anniversary. Even the honeycombs that don't want your marriage to make it. So you gotta dress up, cause you're the first lady. And you gotta come here, praise the Lord, God bless you. I wanted to tell all of them, go to hell. Oh, see, I said what you think. Let me go here. I went in there, my first lady look. But that night of all nights, that Negro preached till he wrecked that house. I'm so mad. I said, look at him. The women just said, yeah! Did you have any plans this evening? He said, yes, I'd like to take my wife to dinner to our little spot. I said, all right, perhaps your wife would like to go. <laughs> On the way to dinner, the Holy Ghost arrested me. He said, you got three minutes to talk your marriage back. Sit there. And I was like, okay, God, what do I say? 
He said, say what you tell other women to say. I said, I'm going to tell you one thing, Red Bones. I may not like you right now, but I still want you. You ain't going nowhere. And I said, uh, I'm the best for you. God created you for me. God created me for you. And so you can do whatever you want, but I ain't going nowhere. I love you. I'm staying right here. And if you want to get somebody else in your life, you go on and do like these other crazy fools are doing all over the country. But I'm going to tell you, like Rodney King said at the L.A. riots nine years ago, we can all get along. I said, I ain't going nowhere. I'm staying right up in here. When I told him that, I saw a light go on in his eyes. He started blushing. He said, girl, you know you crazy. I said, you crazy if you think I'm leaving you. Negro, you got that engineering firm. We got seven houses. We got six cars. We got other stuff we getting ready to acquire. You ain't going nowhere. I'll get a Jewish attorney that hate men. You ain't going nowhere. It's going to be me and you and God to death do you part. I said, now you know already them buried one and each husband get better. So if you want... Oh girl, I talked that thing. I talked, I talked my way back into my marriage. I talked it until I started believing. I said, I do love this man. Look at that man's brown eyes. He's a fine Negro. He said, then he can preach. You know, if you've got a husband that can't preach, you'd be all embarrassed when you go out. <laughs> go in the bathroom and stay a long time. <laughs> Talk to me, girls. Y'all got to be. But when you got a Negro that can preach, you can sit on that floor and say, go, baby, go. And the boy can preach. He got money and stuff. So on the way home, see, because one, I'm so saved, y'all. I have Brooklyn Tabernacle and Fred Hammond, all the worship songs. You learn all of them, girl. I just weep before God. <laughs> but I didn't learn about Kenny G and folk play. And honey, I got one of those in my car. I hit that button. Bam! On that ride back home, I said, boom, 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 boom. I'll sit over there seat and I said, look out the window, play like you don't see it, girl. Pretty soon he reached over, he said, you know you something. I said, boy, you know you something too. <laughs> Look, before we got home, I called home. I said, Andrea, if you ain't sleep, go to sleep. If the dog is woke, put him out. Because we got a little situation going on. You can't let the devil take your marriage. You can't let the devil take your money. You can't let, I'm too old to get another man. I'm 54, I ain't got time to look for nobody. The devil is a lie. I talked my way back into that marriage. You can have what you say. Life and death is in. I don't know who needed that. Because I hadn't planned to come in and tell my business. I'm sick of telling y'all what I go through. While I'm at it too, there's 200 of you that's supposed to bring special offerings of 100 and 500 and 1,000 dollars. While I'm talking, you don't even have to wait. It won't disturb you. Believe me. <laughs> we won't even notice you because we want to give God time to do what He's gonna do with us. But we don't want to leave Bishop Jake's hanging with nothing on that budget. And just whenever the Lord leads you and touch you, some of you could write a check for 10,000. Don't tell me you can't. I'm smelling your cologne. You do whatever God tell you. And if you ain't got but a penny, God will use that penny like it's a million dollars. Oh, Oh my God, I was at convocation and they asked for a thousand dollar offering. I didn't have but 500. I stood up like I had the thousand. And somebody handed me an envelope with 5,000. Sometimes if you just stand up, God will do it for you. Jesus. God just wanted to tell you that. Where, where, where? This woman had tried everything, not till she touched Jesus did stuff get better. Not till I touched Jesus did stuff get better for me. Now, I gotta tell you something. You're not the only one with an issue. 
at the same time that I'm going through, she's going through, they're going through, Hub went through, they went through, and tomorrow the rest of you going through. So when you're on your way to get to Jesus, you'll bump into a lot of other people. Tell your neighbor, don't let a crowd disturb you. You got to play like if ain't but one person getting blessed in here, it's me. In fact, look down your row. Look at, look at everybody on your row and say, I'm going to give you some information. If it ain't but one miracle on this row, it's mine. You got to get greedy. That woman could not let all the other people in the crowd disturb her. She wasn't the only one sick. You're not the only one with a shaky marriage. You ain't the only one been laid off. You're not the only one child on drugs. You're not the only one your daughter is pregnant. Somebody else is going through. Now look at this. And certainly had an issue. God only lets issues happen to certain people. Tell somebody, you couldn't handle my issue. But tell them, don't feel bad, I can't handle your issue. Y'all gotta know something. When I went through that hell two months ago, I was preaching and teaching at family conferences all over the world. I spoke at a conference in London, called home and said, baby, I love you. He said, why would you say that? I said, the devil then got in the phone line. <laughs> the Verizon then went crazy. The cell phone is broke. Let me call on the hotel phone and see this. You can't stop being who you are just because trouble hits you. Because if the truth was known, trouble is hitting you because of who you are. Some of you said, I've been struggling with this leading lady thing. I've been struggling with this whole thing of stars. There's too many stars in the kingdom. And I personally feel like we don't need to encourage people to become leading ladies and leading stars and things. It's only one God. <laughs> this for you that's struggling with being who God said you already were. Zephaniah 3 and 19. This ain't in my note. God told me to throw it in. Behold, at that time, I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halted or will stop, and I'll gather her that was driven and put out, and I will give her praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time will I bring you again, even at the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes. Now, what's a leading lady? What's a star? Somebody with a name, praise, and fame. It's right here in the text. Name, praise, and fame. Tell yourself, give yourself permission to be who God said you were. Now I'm going to tell you something. All of us have issues. Look at your neighbor and say, you got issues. I got issues. Your mama got issues. Your daddy got issues. Everybody in here got issues. And some of us have Secret issues. Some of your issues are that you're working, some are that you're unemployed, some is that you're married, some of your issues you're single, some of you sick, some of you well, some of you rich, some of you poor, some of you tall, some of you short, some of you overweight, some of you thin, some of you got too much hair that you you know you, you put in one row too many and some of you bald. Everybody got issues. And the issues are ushered in your life to hinder you. Secret stuff comes to leave you barren and hidden. They come to drain the abundant life that Christ planned for you. Just as you're about to get a big promotion at work, the issue of fear comes up and you back away even from going to the interview. You don't even find out if you could have got it. Or maybe you're at the beginning of a new God-ordained relationship when an issue of your past brings shame or guilt and makes you tell the man, I changed my mind, I'm not ready to go out. Regardless of your specific issue, all of us experience limitation in our walk in the kingdom of God. Tell your neighbor, all of us experience limitations. And all of the issues come at the hand of the enemy to do three things. To defile us, to destitute us, and to make us feel desperate. Now what exactly is an issue, Wanda? Well, according to the gospel of St. Wanda chapter 1... 
always wanted to do this. An issue is a condition or an attitude or a circumstance that robs you of the life that Jesus died for you to have. Issues can include but are not limited to such things as pride, poverty, fear, rebellion, physical limitation, mental limitations. Issues are those private secret things of your past and present that show up to hinder you, to block you, to trouble you, to hold you hostage, to abort your dreams, and even destroy your destiny, hopes, and desires. They are the challenges. They are the problems. They are the crises that attach themselves to us, sometimes generationally. When I was pregnant with Wendy, my oldest daughter, who's 32, I had low blood and, and I was very anemic. I had a Jewish doctor that put me on two tablespoons of that kosher wine every night. <laughs> One week into it, I've decided I enjoy being pregnant. That's deep, it hit you on the way home. And after I had Wendy, I was 113 pounds when I got pregnant. That child weighed nine pounds, seven ounces, 21 inches. I thought I was dying, literally. <laughs> After I had her, I went back for the six weeks checkup. And they test your blood and tell you, you know, everything's all right and blah, blah, blah. The doctor said, well, you know, everything is normal. You can resume life and you don't need to take the kosher wine. I said, I just sure check it. <laughs> I called my mom and I was telling her about it. She said, fool, let that wine alone. Alcoholism run in the family. <laughs> I said, when was y'all going to tell me? I've been saved all my life. Sometimes your family can be in God so long they forget to tell you the history so that you can understand some of the issues you have. You didn't just wake up full of lust. Sometimes your grandmama had lust and your auntie and your mama's best friend crossed the street. You ain't just on drugs because you want to be. Sometimes that's an addiction attached to your family. You don't think King David just started looking at Bathsheba on his own. <laughs> Jesse was a bad boy. <laughs> Why do you think David was out in the back with the sheep when the man of God, the prophet, came looking for a new king? Said all the seven boys in the house were tall and handsome, but David was red and short outside with the sheep. Why? Because he was Jesse's, but he wasn't Mrs. Jesse. He said, in sin was I formed in my, and shaped in iniquity in my mama's womb. And y'all know, the one thing you don't like is that child you didn't birth. I can't get nobody to be honest. Come on, y'all, tell the truth. So the, Miss Jesse said, put him outside. Now that trickled on down. Jesse's daddy was a whole monger. Jesse had little stuff on the side. And so here come David. Now granted women, sometimes we push our husband to the roof looking for Bathsheba. That's the issue too. When you got a headache every other night and three monthly cycles in one month. Don't touch that. I don't like nobody to touch that. Oh, don't touch that. Oh, don't blow in my ear. Fool, you stay single. The men paid me to tell you, if you go get married, let them touch you. Do you know why David was up on the roof? Because his wife didn't celebrate when he brought the ark back in. But people thought it was a spiritual thing. It wasn't. You know what his wife was really upset about? That David was showing all the single girls in the kingdom what she hadn't seen lately. He took his clothes off for them in the name of dancing for God and sister girl got hot. Y'all know if your husband show another woman what you ain't seen, you'll get hot. <laughs> Tell your neighbor girl, don't push your man up on the roof because somebody will be bathing. If your husband want a little something, something and you tired, you tell him, baby, I'm a little tired, but just give me five minutes. Send somebody to 7-Eleven, pick up some Red Bull, pour it in some orange juice, say, let's go! Don't be that tight. Just give me five minutes, baby. Take five minutes to kick in. Just give me five minutes. Let me have five minutes.
issues, 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 issues. Stuff that comes to block your success. Stuff that comes to block your effectiveness in the kingdom. Issues are like a run in a pair of new nylon. They show up without invitation. <laughs> issues have become a hip term in current psychobabble where we used to refer to someone as having a besetting sin or weight, we now declare so-and-so has a major unresolved issue. And while we are pointing accusing fingers at everyone else, we overlook the fact that we are lugging around the heavy baggage of our own issue. Robert Schuller said, I didn't know how heavy my bags were until I put them down. We're so busy looking at her issue and finding his issue and checking out their issue that we're not taking care of our issue. And some of you don't believe you have issues because you're still working in the kingdom, preaching, teaching, singing, still the usher. Oh, yeah, see, y'all don't, y'all, 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 y'all. You still know how to dip with that song? You go, ow! And when you dip, you didn't sing good, you just dipped and everybody screamed. You said, God is using me. Let me tell you something. God is the only employer will fire you and let you keep on working. Just because you're still working don't mean you're still hooked up and ain't got no issues. It means you're just in grace. You're just, you just in some grace. Then how do we discover our own issues? How can I describe them? What do they look like? I'm not going to tell you everything because I want you to buy the book. That wouldn't be good marketing. <laughs> but issues cause separation. Right. Issues always flow from a source. They don't just happen. It comes from somewhere. Till you deal with the source of your issues, you won't get rid of it. You'll just keep treating it. Issues result in character qualities that limit our lives. Issues elicit strong emotions, and one of the strongest emotions it elicits is something called fear. And then shame, and then guilt, and then anger, and then frustration. It may also trigger emotional reactions in others as well, such as disapproval, prejudice, hate, arrogance, judgment, condemnation, and rejection. Issues are unwelcome. Issues affect our everyday lives and personalities. Issues that make you walk different. Oh, if you don't believe it, ask Mephibosheth. <laughs> issues result in bondage. You don't believe it, ask Samson. Ball blind and bound because of issues. Issues often become excuses. See, if I had been, if I had been in another church and had an opportunity to get rid of stuff, then I, then I could have been up there preaching at the leading ladies too. But then, see, so what happened was... Issues tend to attract more issues. Before I found out how fine I was, how beautiful, and how awesome and fearfully, wonderfully created in the image of God. Can you imagine as awesome as I am, I thought I was ugly, as cute as I am. Can you believe the devil had made me think? People would say, you look beautiful. I said, this old thing. They said, we ain't talking about your clothes. You're beautiful. I couldn't believe it. I would say, what did they see? Because the devil had lied to me. He said, you're too tall. Your legs are too long. Till I learned that there was a definition. There was some things. I can't. There's some kids in here. Jesus. Because I didn't feel good about me. I didn't have enough esteem. I was looking the part. Walking the part. Preaching the part. But I didn't believe it. I believed it for you. But I didn't believe it for me. Come on, y'all. Come on, be honest. I could tell you how awesome you were. And then I'd go home and say, why did they invite me to speak? I'm the craziest one out there. They'd say, I'm God's fool. Of course, you'd want to make what this fool makes. But anyway, <laughs> when I found out how awesome I was, because before that, then I, well, I was insecure. And then when I became insecure, it attracted jealousy. So I thought everybody wanted what I had. She wanted him. That heifer wanting cow, make it like God told her to come volunteer at the church. She want my husband. What really was happening was I didn't believe I was enough to keep him. But when I found out who I really was, 
I'll now start praising God if you fold the bulletin. God bless you, here's a flower. I send thank you notes, I buy them gifts. Work, baby, work. So mama can go home, do her nails, and lay up on the pillows and do what you can't do. Oh. When I really found out who I was, one Sunday morning when we finished dressing for church, my husband looked back at me and said, you know, you are beautiful. I said, I am, aren't I? When I looked back, he was like this. I said, close your mouth. I didn't found out. <laughs> when I found out, I stopped going to the sale rack. Here I was a multi-millionaire and going to the sale rack. I don't go to the sale rack no more. I tell God if I want it, I don't care what I cost. I'm worth it. Give it to me. <laughs> Last Monday when my husband left, I had just made $17,000 at one meeting one night put it in the bank and went home and I said, you forgot to leave my spending money. He said, do you need money? I said, I need your money. Leave me some money, honey. I ain't spending mine, I'm spending urine. They told me I got to 12.30, we gotta wrap this up real quick. Issues are a part of a deliberate energy strategy. The bottom line is issues will hold you in bondage until you decide to get rid of them. Do I have anybody here that wants to get rid of them? Jesus. It was not till the woman with the issue of blood had ran out of all of her resources that she said, I need help. Has anybody else here ran out of resources? There's three things you gotta do. To get rid of your issue. Number one, you got to become exhausted. You got to get tired of being tired. You got to get broke and less than broke. You got to have no other girlfriend to call. You can't call your mama. When I was shut in with God asking God, what in the world is going on with my life? My sisters would call me long distance and God said, don't tell them. I just wanted to tell somebody I'm hurting. Can't y'all see I'm bleeding? God said, shut your mouth. If you told them, they can't fix it. Who do you know can make your husband love you? Who do you know can make your boss give you back your job? Who do you know can make a bank let you stay in a house when you didn't have no money for the note? Who on earth can do that? Nobody but God. So bypass the people on earth and go straight to God. And that's the next step. You got to bring your issue to the light of Jesus. Let him enlighten you. Let him shine it. Drop your pride. Drop who you think you are. Drop who people think you are. And say, I'm bleeding. I'm hurting. God, I don't know what else to do. I ain't even got no money. I don't qualify for food stamps. I don't qualify for Medicare. God, could you give me strength just to get to one more church service? And when I get there, could I be honest and tell God underneath the St. John's, underneath the Lily Hands, underneath the hair, underneath the pantsuit, underneath the jewelry, I got an issue. I don't know what to do with it. I'm bleeding and it seems like nobody can even see it. I want to tell you why some God won't let people see your issue sometimes. Because sometimes who's with God could destroy you with your issue. Jairus was with Jesus when the woman came with her issue. Jairus was a ruler of the synagogue. He had political and spiritual and financial and economical. And he had legal authority. And it was a sin and a crime for a woman to come out of her house bleeding. The very man that was with Jesus, that if he saw her bleeding, could have had her stoned to death. This is what I love about it. It said that she came in the press behind. Sometimes you can't go like the other people toward Jesus. Sometimes if they go in that way, you got to literally take your behind and back your way in 
through the crowd so they won't see your condition on your way. Then once you get to Jesus and you touch him, it's not enough just to touch him. You got to entrust your issue to Jesus and leave it with him. Once I heard from God and said, this is an attack from the enemy, but I'm going to turn your mess into a message. Once God told me, I'm taking you through for the women that you've got to minister to. Your husband does love you. You do love him. You will not become another statistic. Once I heard, I left that marriage with God. I got on the field and I preached hell out of hell. I tore down everything I ran into that looked like a demon. Every marriage that I saw that looked like was crashing, I invested time and money. I said, oh, baby, go fix your hair. Go get a new dress. You gonna keep your man. I was determined. Now that I know this is for ministry's sake, now that I know it all. So I gotta be exhausted. I gotta drop my mask, come out of denial, and I gotta give it to him. I want every woman that's got an issue to stand to your feet. And I want you to run down here if you have to go up in the choir stand, get up here and get all around here. Get up here. Get up here. Press. 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 Tell your neighbor, get away from me. It's my turn. <laughs> I'm going to stand up on this step and y'all stop right here unless you need to come further. Get on up here. Push, 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 push. Get on up here. Push, push. Tell your neighbor. I don't care what you think about me. I know what I'm going home to. I know what I slept with last night. I know my issue. And if this is my last chance to get rid of it, I can't worry about you. Take your hands and cup them together. Put your issue in your hand and look at it. To push is to pray praise and worship till something happens. I want you to take 20 seconds and open your mouth and tell God what you want him to do with the issue that you have. And then after 15 seconds of praying about it, I want you to praise him in advance until you bring him in this room. One, two, three, go to talking about it. Don't worry about who's standing next to you. Jairus' daughter is dying. He don't care about you. He's trying to get Jesus to his house. Open your mouth and tell the truth. Tell God, I'm sleeping with a man I can't stand. Tell God, I hate my children. Tell God, I'm out of relationship with my parents. Tell God, I'm really backslidden. Tell God, I got an issue of lying. I got an issue of lack. I got an issue of pride. I got an issue. Tell God, I'm sick. I got HIV. I got AIDS. I got cancer. I got tuberculosis. I got arthritis. I don't even want people to know. Tell him. Now open your mouth and begin to praise him in advance. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him until you feel his presence. Praise him until you touch him. Reach out and touch him. He's here. Oh, he's here. He just came in here. He's here. Oh, 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 oh. Now hold your praise. By faith you have touched him. Hold your praise. Now I want you to get in three circles of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Right quick, right quick, right quick. Because after you touch him, he says, who touches me? Not to embarrass you, but to complete a miracle in your life. You're going to go around that circle and quickly, you're going to say, my issue was lying. My issue was lust. My issue was jealousy. My issue was fear. My issue was poverty. My issue was anger. 
My issue was adultery. I don't care what it was. You open your mouth and you tell your sister, Jesus healed me of my issue and it was. One, two, three, go around the circle. When you get to the third person, throw your hands up and go into a worship. That third one, lift your hands and go into a worship. It's just that simple. You just got free. Hold on a minute. Hold your worship and look at me. Look at me. Your touch grabbed you a healing for your issue. But your testimony of faith has caused God to say, Shalom, woman, be made whole. Hold on a minute. Let me explain it right quick. The woman that was sick 12 years no longer had a job and didn't have a house and was broke. So she didn't just need to be healed. She needed a house. She needed friends. She needed a family. She needed a car. She needed joy. She needed a, a miracle. She needed a job. She needed a ministry. Because of your testimony of faith, everything else lacking, Jesus just released it. Shalom. Be made whole. Run back to your seat and on your way, touch people and say, I celebrate you. Run back, run back, run back, run back, run back, run back. I celebrate you. Oh, I celebrate you. Run back to your seat. I've got to tell you one last sentence. You had to come to this class before your graduation. You had to. You had to. You had to. What God is getting ready to do for you, you had to get free of where you already was. Not one thing will be harmed for her. Thank you. Let me tell you something. When I got rid of the issue in my marriage, the issue of fear of being alone again, the issue of worry, the issue of shock, as soon as I got rid of it, Time Warner, Walk Worthy, sent me a contract for two books. As soon as I got rid of it, Black entertainment in Europe. I start all over Europe July 15th on television. Right after Joyce Myers and right before Creflo Dollar. As soon as I got rid of my issue, I start July 15th in South Africa on TV every Sunday. As soon as I got my, rid of my issue, I was invited to teach married couples in Germany and Japan. As soon as I got rid of my issue. Your issue is holding up your assignment. Your issue is holding you up, leading lady. That's why you had to come here and get rid of it. Tell somebody, I got rid of it. I got rid of it. Don't take the baskets yet. Some of you, your issue was financial. And God said, there are 10 women right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Get $1,000 and get it up here right now. He's going to break the curse of poverty off of your family. Get up here right quick. You ain't got but 10 to 15 seconds. It's 10 of you. Get $1,000 and get up here. Where are you? Where are you? You only got 10 seconds. If you're one of them, wave your hand. You're going to miss a miracle. 
Get it and get up down here now. Where are you? Where are you? There's one. Where are you? You did. Thank you. Bless you. Come up here. If you already had gave it, get up here. Contracts are being released in your name. Property is being released. Miracles for your children. There's eight men.